Paul, good evening to you. So a second ceasefire now then has just been called. The first one, of course, was breached within hours. What is the latest situation in Tripoli? Just now I heard gunfire over your shoulder there. Well, Kevin, that's right. As I'm talking to you, there is anti-aircraft gunfire happening just a short distance behind me. This is the second time in as many hours that we're witnessing this over the capital city of Tripoli. It's not quite clear why the government is firing. We have seen no incoming fires. So the understanding here is that this might be a show of strength, a sign of support for Gaddafi. Now, the ceasefire announcement was certainly a surprise. It was made at 9 o'clock this evening local time by a government spokesperson. He said that there would be an immediate ceasefire. There hasn't yet been any reaction from the international community. We don't think that there will be a reaction because certainly the previous announcement of a ceasefire by the Gaddafi regime did not carry that much weight and turned out to be quite meaningless. Now, the Arab League has been holding an emergency summit in Cairo. The Secretary General, Amr Musa, says he's been misquoted. He was quoted as saying that the Arab League signed up for the no-fly zone to protect civilians and not actually to kill them. Now, whether or not there's been a misunderstanding, because the latest word we have coming from this meeting is that the Arab League is still endorsing this no-fly zone, but it certainly is raising concerns about what is happening behind the scenes. Is there confusion or is there dissent within the ranks? When you gauge the mood here on the ground, what people very much are saying is that increasingly it looks likely that it's going to be the United Arab Emirates, Qatar and possibly Jordan that will be coming forward, but mostly in the, in, in, in the sense that they'll be footing the bill rather than participating in military strikes. And this raises very real questions. Why are they doing this? Is it a genuine concern for the Libyan people? Is it rather some kind of vendetta against Gaddafi? Or is it rather a way to try and further entrench the United States in this part of the region? Most people here who support a no-fly zone would rather have seen countries like Tunisia and Egypt, neighboring countries, come to the fore to help with this Arab democratic revolution. It's not particularly welcomed in some circles that you have the United States and Europe spearheading this move. Now there again we have the anti-aircraft fire. As I say, it's been happening throughout the night. We're still not very clear exactly why the government is doing that because there is no incoming fire. It's happening a short distance from me and I can tell you that it's a little bit frightening when you hear it. There will no doubt be cars hooting on the streets behind me. They were hooting early again, very much a show of support for the Gaddafi regime. I do want to add, though, that state television throughout the day has been showing pictures of victims of these airstrikes. They claim that more than 60 people have been killed. We've been seeing those pictures non-stop. In fact, as the foreign media, we were invited to go to some of the funerals. It's not clear, though, whether the funerals have been staged. There is some suspicion that some of the pictures and that some of the people being buried are not directly related to the strikes that we witnessed last night. Paula, let's talk about the coalition forces. The official line from them today is that the initial stages of the airborne intervention has been a success despite the international criticism. But well, what's next, do you think, uh, on their agenda? What's going to happen next? Well, Kevin, it's a little bit difficult to hear you because, as you can hear, this anti-aircraft fire is happening behind me and people in front of me are starting to run. Most of the focus of the fighting today was in the city of Misrata, which is the third largest city here. Now, behind me, I can hear people screaming in the street, and we were hearing the same kind of sounds coming out of the city of Misrata today. Difficult for us as journalists to go there. We've been prevented from reaching Misrata for three weeks now, but eyewitnesses there saying that the tanks have rolled into the town centre. They were saying that the Gaddafi forces were going from house to house. They called it a cleansing. They said it was essentially his intention to completely write off that town of Misrata. The latest word, though, from the international forces is that British typhoon and tornado planes have been sent to an air base in Italy. That means that they're only 30 minutes away from here, so they will be able to come here immediately if needed to. We are also hearing, though, that despite the international community's announcement that it has managed to deplete most of Gaddafi's surface-to-air defense missile systems, he still has some remote ones. And so the international community cannot rest on its laurels and assume that its aircraft over Libyan airspace is free and is completely safe. Paul, so again, you... just to remind you what we're hearing. Yeah, I was going to say, Paul, you mentioned that people are running there. First of all, is it safe for you to continue with this interview? If not, please go. I just wanted to ask you another question, if I may, uh, if it is safe for you to stay there. And um, what's your feeling of the strength of support tonight for Colonel Gaddafi? The, the, the questioning we were following up earlier on was, 
Do you think some of the people that had turned against Gaddafi may be turning back towards him again because of this, uh, uh, because of this uh, Allied uh, intervention? Kevin, I do think that if people are turning their support back towards him, it might not be because of the Allied intervention. I mean, to some extent it might be. Nobody really wants to see foreign soldiers on the soil here. And although the mission at the moment is limited in terms of what we're hearing to a no-fly zone, there will be no support if it's extended into foot soldiers. So certainly those who are feeling that concern will turn their support back to Gaddafi. But I think more than that, people here are frightened. I mean, when you hear signs like this, which we are understanding at this stage because we're seeing no incoming fire, being a show of support for Gaddafi, he certainly is making sure that his men and his supporters understand who is in control in this country and certainly who is in control here in the capital city of Tripoli. Now, behind me, I do hear people shouting. I do hear cars hooting. There's always a sense of confusion when this kind of gunfire erupts in the skies. So the situation here in Tripoli, incredibly tense. People are incredibly nervous. And while we're hearing that the international community will soon be sending French planes back here, I suspect that in the coming hours we'll continue to hear these kind of sounds erupting from the skies. OK, Paula, keep safe and keep updating us, if you will. Artis Paula Sleer, there with the very latest from the capital, Tripoli, tonight.